This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Well, D23 Fan Expo has finally broken me. Actually, they took the Fan Expo out of the name. You see, it's just D23 now. Anything to distance itself from its previous format. This is something new, something new and expensive. <laughs> Bobby Ives and the Finance Boys have finally won. While introducing a way to get guaranteed seats for bigger panels, they went ahead and genie plus the whole thing. So for the first time, I don't think I'm going. Everyone sit down. This is gonna be one of those bewildered Disney dance angry videos. <laughs> <laughs> it's dangry damn. It might have been obvious, but I'm now just realizing that D23 was entirely built just to juice Comic Con margins. The Mouse Corporation spent the early 2000s buying up entertainment's biggest franchises just as the popularity of those comic conventions and Disney's new presence at them began to surge. In 2009, our on again, off again CEO hatched a plan. Why not reveal the most exciting announcements at conventions we profit from? <laughs> Thunder, lightning, it's like a old Mel Brooks movie. Lies, do you hear me? It took six years, but in 2015, Marvel announced that it's pulling out a San Diego Comic-Con Hall H, which at that point had become the mecca for all the hot media tea. Instead, all the new Marvel movies and all the other huge franchises Disney had been acquiring would now be gated behind D23, a growing little fan expo ran entirely by Disney for Disney fans. I love the irony now of Bob Iger's original announcement of D23. We have a fantastic legacy that started in 1923, and it's based on timeless stories and beloved characters and unforgettable experiences, but it's our fans that keep the spirit of Disney alive year after year, generation after generation. D23 is our way of saying thank you and celebrating our fans who bring the magic of Disney to life every day in every corner of the world. So what was D23 initially? Well, this was a thank you club with multiple tiers. The free membership was nonsense with a lot of fluff like access to the website, and of course, the ability to buy tickets to the expo, but the $75 gold membership, $99.99 today, was packed with perks. Gold members got an exclusive quarterly magazine, and I've got a fat stack of these babies right here and over there and behind here. There's too many of these D23 magazines in my home. You also got a yearly gift box of some randomly mass-produced mailer, like this uh, box and those tins and those pins and this weird stuff over here. <laughs> but hey, you feel like an influencer getting like an officially branded box, baby. The first expo in 2009 was about $100 for a three day pass. And the whole thing was at the Anaheim Convention Center, literally a block away from the entrance of Disneyland. You were encouraged to book vacation packages and really drink in the joys of Disneyland Resort. It was this really amazing week long getaway for people like myself to experience the unique resort that's so unlike the horrorist, the <laughs> to experience the unique resort that's so unlike the tourist hub Walt Disney World has really become. And like all good conventions, it was a real community event. You find fans trading pins, making friends in long lines, and of course, browsing ultra rare and even long discontinued Disney merch. Also just like all the antique weird stuff, like the Hatbox Ghost and, and also like the giant balloon figment, just, it's just the convention's so cool, man. But the best part of the convention was the included panels. Breathing in the same air as ultra famous Disney legends as they were inducted. Yes, Robin Williams. I've been to multiple panels. Heck, I was even in a panel once as part of the greatest reveal of theme park history of all time. And that's just because I was in it. I'm, I'm a, li a li little bit biased there. But it's the core element of going to a convention. All that wonder and access included in a single ticket cost. Little did I know how spoiled I was. So what went wrong here? Well, Disney is definitely in its pay to play era. Now it feels like our fandom is being nickeled and dimed by a company that's already shook all the loose change out of our pockets just to get in the door. A full ticket prior to 2024 might've cost you two, 300 bucks after your $100 membership, by the way, and included everything from the Disney Legends panel to the exclusive park announcements. But today, a ticket to see every panel will set you back an additional $100. And that's just the nosebleed seats, baby. You want those good seats? That's gonna be $2,600, what? And there's 14,000 seats at the Honda Center. ka freaking ching <laughs> Do you like paying for your seat on an airplane? 
on top of the existing ticket price. Do you want movie theaters to start doing this? I mean, don't get me wrong. Upgrades and extra convenience has always been available, but as fans, we used to pay for that with our dedication. Disney and everyone else these days just wants cold hard cash. Did you notice I stabbed my membership through the sword? I've got like seven of these things. Like I said, I've been a member for six years. Like they just keep sending me these. I've got membership cards just coming out my wazoos. Have I ever shown anyone this membership card for any good use purpose? No. Now here's the real question. Who monetizes the monetizers? Put me on the top of a mysterious roof. Who monetizes the monetizers? Buying tickets to the 2024 D23 was so broken. The previous D23 took 128 days to sell out. This D23 sold out in 48 hours. In past years, members were permitted just two tickets per membership, but this year you could buy up to eight tickets. While this move was surely to help friend groups sit together and shop together, it quickly turned into an event reseller goldmine. Thanks to a new partnership with the Honda Center, tickets are now fully transferable through secondary ticket resale sites. And now you can purchase a ticket for a hefty markup, completely nerfing the whole point of the $100 gold membership. In fact, the first day gold ticket sales had to essentially be halted to keep enough available for the sponsored Visa pre-sale that didn't open until the second day. Did no one think this through? And it's funny, I'm having a hard time getting some people to see the issue with this because for so many small businesses who make a profit supporting Disney, they can't possibly miss this. From their perspective, Vloggers, travel agents, reporters, resellers, you know, people in the industry like me, they of course see this as an absolute win. Uh, it's a tax write-off for crying out loud. It's a guaranteed seating. It's convenience to the thing that I profit from directly. Bingo, you know, and Disney 100% knows that. Money, I'm gonna start doing it. I just love seeing that genie with a switchblade. <laughs> But for the everyday super fan, it's not the same story. You were essentially cornered into buying a three-day panel ticket. I was really only interested in going to the parks panel, but I still wanted to attend the full weekend convention, but there was absolutely no option for that. I would have either had to have bought a three-day panel seating ticket, or I would have had to have purchased two separate transactions, which never would have happened because of the overlong queue that continually crashed. Oh, and I completely forgot to mention the Honda Center partnership. Panels used to be on the show floor, uh, but now they are in a secondary location, the Honda Center, which is not really a safely walkable distance from the convention floor. It's like over an hour walk away, says Google Maps. And the panels are now at night, hours after the convention closes. And the biggest kicker of all, you can't bring any bags with you to the panel. I mean, of course you can't. There is a zero bag policy at the Honda Center. So you have to make sure you hustle back to your hotel room or car to drop off everything you got from your full day of shopping at a merchandise convention. I'm like a freaking hitchhiking ghost by the time I'm done at a convention floor for the day with all sorts of like bags and chains strapped to me. I've got suitcases. I, I don't know what's going on and what I bought, but uh, all I know is that I'm sweating my butt off. My, my dogs are barking and I just want to get back to the hotel room and you know, kick it. I don't wanna continue to kick it into the night with even more hustling. But seriously, why do I keep paying for a gold membership to D23? I paid for it for nearly six years and it became so worthless overnight. I told Offhand Disney to go get a gold membership in before the tickets went on sale. And he was like, dude, uh, why did I do this? <laughs> Because he, he spent $100 on a membership that he was like completely locked out of using. <laughs> and then he just got the Visa pre-sale ones. Why am I going to buy a membership to something that you're not going to account for me for in the first place? Why couldn't individual gold members still bought their two tickets before the eight ticket grouping was rolled out? I bought a membership to something that I can't attend because they sold my ticket to someone with a Disney Visa card, even though I have a Disney Visa card. So I guess this is what Disney annual pass holders feel like. And for those of you who don't know, the COVID park reservation policy caused Disneyland pass holders to almost never be able to go to the parks on a short-term notice, having to book like a months in advance, uh, completely defeating the point of having an annual pass. So uh, they sued Disney and Disney had to pay them $9.5 million. Hilarious. I should be sent an email that says, hey, it looks like you paid for a Disney gold membership and uh, you didn't go to the expo. Are, are, uh, you want that money back now? <laughs> Look, it's fun for me going to the Disney park panel. It feels like 
an insider, seeing how things work, seeing how Imagineers think, getting teased some random things the company has no intention of building. But honestly, I was cool with that. You know, it's annoying, but whatever. Blue Sky, Dreamers, Disney, you know. But now you want me to pay to come sit in on what could honestly just be some glorified shareholder meeting uh, where I have no idea if or when anything you say will happen. Epcot's entire promised vision was flushed down the toilet so fast. And that was the cornerstone of the whole presentation in 2019. We've seen endless concept art reveals that are so far from the finished product that we finally get in the parks. Plus updates are revealed to us for theme parks and other countries that a lot of people in the audience are just not gonna go and visit and see. It's all fine when it's a community event, but like charging me to like hear these things? Why does it feel like Disney is always so concerned with making us believe they're on the cusp of a win instead of like committing the time and energy to actually make the win happen? And now you want me to pay extra to essentially be overhyped and like, you know, borderline gaslit? No thanks. So I'll save a few thousand dollars for my Disneyland tickets, the hotel in California, the expo passes, all the ride share I'm gonna be needing for the back and forth from the secondary locations this event has been split into, all the hyper-priced merchandise is just gonna be on eBay within a couple weeks, back to the con retail that it was once sold for, you know, uh, and on top of all of that, the panels, the panels that like, you know, I love, they're streamed uh, to audiences at home, uh, uh for free. So why, 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 uh. so this year, I don't think I'm going to D23. I said, I'll be at the parks or on a cruise or whatever it is, but enjoying the product instead of being told to pay to show that I love it. Now here's the real question. Are you next? You know, Iger is still gathering up franchises and he's looking for a replacement that's just as hungry. And he's picking these things up like Infinity Stones. You know, Fox brought in so many new fandoms to be squeezed, revivals of Marvel franchises. And now we're elevating things like Avatar and all of its big old movies. And now we got The Simpsons and Taylor Swift fans and a Bluey, you know, even Grandpa's National Geographic subscription has somehow been wrapped up in all of this. Look, all I can say is I hope the thing that you love doesn't get roped into this mega corporation and squeezed for every cent that it can be squeezed for. I hope that the art that you love continues to be made by people who love to make it uh, and not by people who are paid to make it or paid to love it. Look, I'm in no way a website master. That's why Squarespace is perfect for me. When I needed to create a website for all my great Disney Dan content, I was able to find an amazing template from their huge library of web designs. With Squarespace's flexible professional website templates, I was able to customize my look, update content, and add features that fit all my needs. Plus, it looks incredible across all types of devices. Check out how detailed you can get. I just changed the footer of my website from this wiggly block thing to this vibey lava lamp thing. It has excellent vibes. If you just want a vibe, just come to the bottom of my new website. But it gets even better thanks to their next generation website design system, Fluid Engine. It's truly mind blowing because it's like a drag and drop website design system that you can use on web or mobile. I can customize like every detail. I like when I go into Fluid Engine mode because all these little squares appear and then and like everything gets to kind of like, I feel like I'm in the matrix. I feel like I'm seeing the code. And if you want to take your brand to the next level, you can also create a members area on your website that offers exclusive access to unique premium content. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Disney Dan to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Okay, don't worry. I put on my gamma ray glasses. Everything is safe. Dangry Dan, the danger has subsided, all right? Everything is calm now. The sun's getting real low, all right? So, you know, if you're going to D23, I respect you. I love you. I hope you have a great time. Send me pictures. I wanna see, I wanna see what you got up to, you know? You know, I saw Josh tomorrow. I don't, I don't what do I need to, I, I said, hey Josh, thanks for bringing Hanson back to Disney. And he's like, thanks. You know, what else, what else? I met Joe Rody. I, you're, you're gonna pay 
$2,600 to see his, his jangle across the stage. I heard his jangle with my own ears, you know? What, what more could I possibly get from D23, you know? <laughs> I'm getting too angry again. Getting too angry again. I gotta remember the sun's getting real low. All right, guys. Thanks for thanks for watching. Follow me on all the holy social medias. Let me know. Leave comments about your D23 stories. Let me know if you're going. All right. Thanks for watching, guys. You rock. Until until you you come in on the audio, <laughs> you're I had all that beautiful room tone.